thing that we can learn from this passage in James, okay, about our words and what we say is this. Words and emotion can build up or they can tear down. They can build someone up, they can encourage somebody, or it can tear them down. And although the tongue is super small, right, physically, it's disproportionately powerful. In verses 3 through 4, James gives us a couple different illustrations on how we see this played out in life. Here's the first one. He says, indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us and we may turn their whole body. Do you know that a horse is half a ton of raw power? Like it can run a quarter of a mile in 25 seconds, right? It can pull and load three and a half times its body weight. The horse is like real deal. And all you got to do is put a bridle on it, right? Those of you who know anything about horses, stick a bridle. And then you put the bit in its mouth and you put a person on the back and you can make it dance. You can make it prance. You can make it think it was a reindeer. (laughs) You can make it do whatever you want because there's something powerful about the mouth. Here's another example. We got the ship, right? The ship's rudder. It says this. Look, also at ships, although they're so large and are driven by fierce winds, they're turned, okay? The direction comes from a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. You know, my parents just went on an awesome cruise a few weeks ago. Um, Thanks for the invite. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) It's it's because my wife's pregnant. That's, That's the truth. And these mega cruise liners, okay, got thousands of passengers on it, massive boat, just steaming right on ahead. And how is it controlled? What dictates its direction? It's just a small rudder. And I think that's the same in life. What, the things that come out of our mouth literally direct our course. They literally determine the direction that we're headed. Our tongue is physically small, but holds tremendous power. Maybe think about it this way, like, Have you ever thought about the words that you say over yourself, okay, make a bigger impact than what words are said to you from others? There's also that side, right? You know, you speak to yourself, maybe you're discouraged and your self-esteem starts to drop and your confidence is diminishing, right? Maybe you found yourself in that place before. Well, the worst thing is those negative mindsets can interfere with where God's trying to take you. And so I love what Pastor Stephen has said a few times, that the best way to kind of battle and, and, and weed out this negativity is to replace the lie with truth. Like you got to find that lie, that, that word that's not correct about who you are, and you got to swap it with something else. God's word says that I'm strong, period. God is fighting my battles with me, period. Right? I'm excited about my future, period. Right? we got to speak these things into existence. And James goes on and he explains the negative consequences of our words. And in these next few verses, he says, Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. He's literally saying like, In this time, in this moment of the early church, everyone's words are just splitting everybody up. It's creating division. Like it's really messing things up because our words have a big impact, right? Some of you might remember that the largest fire, okay, like fire in the history of California was back in 2003. I know some of y'all weren't even around for that. But it was fueled by dry weather, okay, whipping winds, kind of like us right now. The blaze eventually consumed more than 280,000 acres of California. 30,000 of those were within the city limits of San Diego. And what do you think started that fire? Just a little campfire and one little spark, like one little piece that just bounced out, caught a flame, and had devastating impact. Families, houses, homes ruined. And do you think that the man meant to do that? No, probably not. But James says that's the power of our words, the power of a careless word, one that we're not even thinking about. Like middle schoolers, someone calls you ugly or whatever, those words can stick around for a long time. I don't know if you've ever had someone say something to you like that that just kind of rattles in your mind forever, and you just see that conversation on replay. 
Maybe you're college age, college student, been through a tough relationship. Maybe you've been told before that you're unlovable, that you're not worth it, not worth that relationship. Or maybe you're an adult working class and you're told you don't have what it takes, you're not capable. And those words, those careless little sparks just have a devastating impact on you. And I've seen that happen before. But the practical thing for us is that we can replace the lies with truth. 